In this video, we're going to see how to apply a Van Gogh effect with Photoshop Elements. We'll see how to go from this to this. Hi, I'm Rick Peterson from EssentialPhotoshopElements.com. Let's go over to Elements and get started. This technique relies on a filter that was introduced in Photoshop Elements 11, so you'll need Photoshop Elements 11 or newer to follow along. The first thing to do is to duplicate the background layer. Press Command-J on a Mac or it would be Control-J on a Windows PC. And now we have an exact duplicate of the background layer and it's named Layer 1 by default. Next, go up to the Filter menu and choose Sketch and Graphic Novel. The Graphic Novel dialog box appears. The box has a pretty large preview of what your image will look like at the current settings. Notice that the preview is black and white. Turning your photo black and white is part of what this filter does. We'll change it back to color in a later step. On the right side of the dialog box are four presets and the one called Painted Gray is active by default and that's the one we want to use for this technique. Below the presets are four sliders. I've experimented with the sliders pretty extensively and the only one that I found that really matters for our technique is the bottom slider that's called thickness. It appears to control how thick the lines are along the edge detail throughout the photo. Below the sliders is a smoothness setting. By default there's no smoothing applied and you can click the add button up to two times to smooth out some of the lines. So there's really only a couple of adjustments that we need to focus on. One is the thickness slider and the other is whether or not to add some smoothness. And there's no specific recommendation I can give you for adjusting these settings. It really depends on the photo and your personal preference for how it looks. For my particular photo, I kind of like the default settings, but let's play around with them a little bit and see what happens. First, I'll move the slider to the left. And the brightness from the thick white lines is greatly reduced. There's some zoom and navigational tools under the preview window. I'm going to use these two boxes. The one that has 1 to 1 in it will show the preview at 100% and the box next to it will show the entire photo in the preview box. By default the one that shows the entire image is active. So I'm going to click on the 100% view to get a little closer look. And I'm going to drag on the title bar of the dialog box to move it over so I can see my original photo, or at least some of it because I want to be able to see how some of my areas are changing. I really like how the green foliage has that liquid flowing effect, which is what made me call this the Van Gogh effect. But I like the sky better when the thickness slider was at the default setting. You can also use this hand tool below the preview window to move to different areas of your photo when you're zoomed in. Just click and drag with it. It was already selected by default. You can quickly get back to the default settings by holding down the Option key on a Mac or the Alt key on a Windows PC. When you do that, the Cancel button temporarily changes to a Reset button. So I'm going to hold down the Option key and click the Reset button. But before I do, I'm going to make a note that the current thickness setting is 0.31 in case I want to go back to that. So now I'll hold down the Option or Alt key and click Reset. And it returns back to those default settings. I like the sky better now, but I don't like the greenery as much. Let's move the slider to the right and see how that looks. For this photo and the look I'm after, that's too much. So I'm going to reset back to the default setting. I'm going to try the smoothness setting to see if that will help tone down the lines a bit. I'll click the add button once. It makes a very slight change so I'll click it once more. Again not a very noticeable difference so I'm going to click the clear button to remove the smoothness. 
Where we stand right now is that I know I don't want to increase the thickness and I like the sky at this setting but I like the foliage better at the lower thickness setting. Maybe a setting somewhere in between will be better. What I eventually decided on was about 0.9 thickness so I'll just put that in. I don't want to keep moving this around um, so just to save time I'm going to put in 0.9 by typing it and I'm going to add smoothness two times so I'll click the add button twice. A person could make two different versions one for the sky and one for the other parts of the photo and then combine them together but that would make this tutorial way too long so I'm not going to go there. All I can really say is to try some different settings until you get something that you like. So once you choose your settings, click OK to close the dialog box and apply your changes. You might get a progress bar while Elements processes the information. This is the result you get from using the graphic novel filter. Part of what that filter does, as I mentioned before, is convert your photo to black and white. I ain't no expert on Van Gogh, but as far as I know, he always painted in color. So to change our photo back to color, but still maintain the flowing effect, is really easy. Go to the Blend Mode box at the top of the Layers panel, which is set to Normal by default. Click on Normal, and from the pop-up list, go all the way down to the last choice, which is Luminosity, and click on it to choose that setting. And you can see over in the work area that our photo has gotten back all of its color now. So that wraps up this video on how to achieve the Van Gogh effect with Photoshop Elements. Until next time, this is Rick from EssentialPhotoshopElements.com saying take care.